change things in this country because we're being suffocated. We're being squashed. People can't survive anymore. They can't live. They've destroyed the currency in this country. The cost of living is through the roof because they've destroyed the currency. I'm going to tell you guys a quick story and it'll show you how devious and how evil these people really are. Okay? Here's this, I, was, I was friends with one of the Rockefeller family and uh, his name was Nick Rockefeller and he got my attention when I was running for governor in Nevada. And I was saying lots of things that uh, I guess they didn't like and he wanted to befriend me to try and get me to change over. And uh, they asked me to join the Council on Foreign Relations and other things. You know, offered me to run the, to build to build the Baywatch nightclubs and they would help me do that and pay for everything and all this stuff. And uh, I wasn't into that. And um, anyway, one night we were talking, and he said to me, Aaron, what do you think women's lib was about? Women's lib, what do you think it's about? And I had the very conventional thinking, and I said, women's lib was about women having the right to work like men do, and having the right to equal pay with men, and I think it was a woman's rights issue. And he looked at me, and he said, you know what? You're an idiot. <laughs> And he was joking when he said that. He was laughing. I said, what was it about then? What do you think it was about, you know? I said, Aaron, we, the Rockefeller family, financed the whole women's love movement. You understand that? I said, no, I didn't understand it then, but I understand it since you told me. And he said, um, why do you think we financed it? Why do you think we promoted it in all the newspapers and magazines and television shows? And he said, you know why? Because before women's live, live, we can only tax half the population. And then he said to me, you know what the second reason was? And I said, what? He said, because now, men working and women working, they have to send the kids to our schools. And we get to train the children how to think, how to indoctrinate the children how to think from an early age. I knew it. And we break up the family home. And, and the family doesn't teach the kid morals anymore. See, we break up the home. That's what they want. The state, the state to control everybody. And to teach people from a young age how to be controlled, to accept control, without thinking twice about it. Think back to the Social Security number. When that number, when that was first made law, it said right on the card, not to be used for identification. Right on the card. That's what it said. Doesn't say that anymore, does it? Right. They do things in increments, like the frog in the pot. You know about that? Yep. Okay, so you take that frog. For the people who don't know, you take that frog, you throw it in the pot of boiling water, it's going to jump right out. But if you put it into warm water and you slowly turn the heat up, he stays there till he boils to death. Well, we're the frogs, and, yet, and we're boiling to death. We're here, and they control us. President Bush is now trying to get powers. To put, and he has it already, some of it, to put Americans in jail indefinitely, that means life, without a trial, without a jury, without anything. American citizens, how much more are we as a people going to allow? When are we going to stand up and say, I'm not going to take this crap anymore? When are you going to do that? Why do people in Serbia or Bosnia stand up and fight? And the people in France stand up. We've become so soft. I'm sorry? So many supported voted by. But the thing is, this is what you have to understand. It's not President Bush. It's, 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 well, who's in charge of the bankers? They control President Bush. They control Hillary Clinton. They control Bill Clinton. They control John Kerry. It's all the same. It doesn't matter which one it is. It's all coming from the banks. The bankers, the Federal Reserve System. That's where it's all coming from. Illuminati. You know? So the way to stop it is to shut down. Look, the Federal Reserve System is a tool for them to take power over us. If we should, because the men behind the Federal Reserve System are the real power. But without that tool, they can't do what they're doing. We have to shut down the Federal Reserve System. Imagine Barry Bonds trying to go hit a home run, but he didn't have a bat. 
Okay? He can't do it. No matter how good a hitter he is, he needs his bat. They need the Federal Reserve System to make the money to buy the politicians. They can make all the money they want out of thin air, out of nothing. Okay? Whoever, whoever makes the money makes the rules. You know, so that's the situation we're in today. Now, I, I, would all, I want to uh, introduce uh, Bill Walls, mm -hmm. Doc, Doc Walls. Right. He's going to be the next mayor. I am supporting this campaign. You know, Doc Walls, please come say hello, and then I'll take some questions. And he's so handsome, too. <laughs> I understand the theater is asking us to uh, dismiss because oh really yeah they they have another yeah. showing and we want people to see this movie this is my right. third night here I was here Friday I was here yesterday and I'm here today and it's always good to look into the faces of people who care about our freedoms who care about America and just to know that you are willing to come out and see a movie like this and that you're going to go home and tell all of your family and your friends about this movie and urge and encourage everybody to come and see it because that is the only way this movie will ever get to general release throughout the United States of America. It's important that people see this movie and understand that we're at the same point that we were at in 1774 when 13 colonies decided that they didn't want to be controlled by a foreign entity. We're yep. at that same position. We yes. have to make choices. The movie said it best. Resist, resist, resist. And if we all stand up, even the nucleus of us, and resist, as Cliff indicated, they didn't care. If you resist, they cannot herd you off. Right. So let's be mindful of that. Now, I'm not going to continue talking, but I do want to indicate that the discussion will continue at Borders. Right across the street. Right across the street. Right. And everybody is welcome to enjoy the discussion. Give Aaron a round of applause, please. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff Kelly, keep it going with Cliff Kelly. Guys like the Grand Star, Paul and that's what we do. I, I just want to mention that I'll be talking about this tomorrow, but make sure everybody gets one of these. Aaron's going to say one other thing, but I just want to make sure, the first time I took a trip and noticed it on my cell phone, when I got to my destination, my cell phone had changed automatically. As I went from one time zone to another, the, 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 the phone changes. I think when they're slapping these kids on the butt now when they're born, they're probably sticking the chip you know where. <laughs> Let me just say one thing. I'm going to go across the street and talk to everybody across the street of borders. Yeah. One thing I want to say, yes. I know some of you are leaving. Please, we don't have the funding of a big movie studio. We can't buy the advertising time and the television time and the newspaper and radio like they can. The only way we're going to succeed is by you talking about it, is by word of mouth, by getting on the internet and spreading this through the internet. It's critical for us. You get people to come to this movie theater and watch this movie. It's critical that they do. Because we can't compete with the big studios. We can't be, compete with the big corporations that are backed by the Fed. We can't do it. So we need you. Remember something. Without our cooperation, they can't do anything. So you don't cooperate with them. You don't accept a national ID card. Okay? You don't accept it. We will not, you know, without our cooperation, the government has nothing. So you have to wake people up, educate them, so they know they can't cooperate with the way the government is functioning today. We have to stop it. I'll see you across the street. You know, Fox News says 83% want this or whatever. You don't know what the reality is. It doesn't matter. You have rights as a person. So secure your rights and stop cooperating with the government and they're taking your rights away. Don't allow them to do that. And what we have to do is get millions of people together we are willing to stand up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. You can't do this to me. You're my servant. I'm not your servant. I needed that break to do so I see somebody raising their hand back there. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, first of all, I wanted to thank you for making this film. I think you're going to inspire a lot of Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What? It'll collapse. Oh, if we do our job, it will collapse. Yeah. They can't do anything. Remember, they can't. They have nothing to do without us. Right. If we don't cooperate, they can't do anything. Exactly. You have to understand that. But our, here's our, here's our difficulty. 
The Federal Reserve can make money out of thin air. They can buy government, they can buy Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or George Bush. They can do whatever they want to do. What they're going to do is sit in a computer and type some digits in and create money. We have to organize. We have a harder job than they do. We have to organize. It takes work. It takes effort on our part to organize, to make things happen. And I, I know I, I made this movie to begin that process. You know, if everybody would go on the website and register, I mean, and sign up to, to stop the Federal Reserve, to sign that petition, and then to start on the, on the form, you know, that we can contact you by email. What I want to do is take freedom to fascism and make that an organization that will eventually be freedom to fascism back to freedom again. Nice. Okay? That's what I want to accomplish. Right. And I want to use that organization and be able to reach out to everybody to have demonstrations, to organize. And we need millions of people registering on the website, signing up on the website, not just a petition, but signing up to get emails, to volunteer, whatever it takes. That's what we need in all communities. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, oh, I, I just want to know if, uh, if uh, you were familiar with the 9-11 Truth Movement and how you think it fits into what we're trying to do here. I'm very familiar with the 9-11 Truth Movement, and I'm, I'm totally convinced that 9-11 was a fraud. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. No yeah. doubt in my mind about Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you know, at first I didn't want to believe it, because it's such an ugly thing to believe, but the fact is, let me ask another question. Who here knows a lot about 9/11? What happened? Who, who believes that? Who believes that uh, the government had nothing to do with it? What? Had nothing to do with what happened that day. Who, who believes the government was involved that day in what happened? Jam. Wow. Okay. Well, let's understand something. Bill, how many, how many, how many, if you know the answer, don't answer. Well, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, most people believe that two buildings fell down that day in New York. Who believes two buildings fell down that day? Fell. Fell. Down. Yeah. How many believe two buildings collapsed that day at the from, Twin Towers? From the plane or from oh, other causes? Oh, Don't fine. take my glory away. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? The head of the guy of the FBI, John O'Neill, was killed in that building. So I prayed for him, and I had a mass for him. I know. I know. Okay. Well, I didn't know. I wasn't aware of that. But let me. The point I was trying to bring out. Building seven. Was that three buildings went down that day, not two. And the third building was called Building Number Seven. And that was a 47-story office tower. It was a pretty big, it wasn't as big as the Twins, but it was still enormous. And um, if you've ever seen the tape of it falling, you realize it's a controlled demolition. It came straight down. Like you see those buildings in Vegas come down? So, uh, so they asked the owner of the building, a man named Larry Silverstein. They asked Mr. Silverstein, well, what made Building 7 fall down? Uh, and it fell down around five hours after the first two fell. And uh, he said the fire department decided to pull it, meaning to bring the building down. That's what he said. So he pulled it. Now, that was a big mistake on his part. <clears throat> if you know anything about controlled demolitions, you know for a building that size, it would take weeks, yeah. months, weeks. To, to control demolition that building, to plant explosives on all the floors and all the right places. You couldn't do it in four or five hours and all the chaos going on there. And you couldn't do it in four or five hours if there was no chaos going in there. It's impossible. So once you know that, and he admitted it was controlled demolition, then you realize that that building had been set up for weeks. For weeks in advance of 9-11 ever happening. Why? What? Why? What was in Why that? What? what was in that building? What was in that building? Well, I think the point was was that it was supposed to go down with the twin towers. So they, there was a plan, and they had two planes hitting the buildings, and then you had the third, and then you had the third building coming down. But but what was on that twenty-third floor? Did you know about that? Which part of it? 
um, that's Mayor Giuliani's uh, CIA oh, war room, you mean? War room yeah. right? Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I've heard a lot of stuff, but that's not important to me. What's important to me, the crucial piece of evidence, is that they said it was pulled down by the fire department, and it's impossible to pull down in four or five hours, which means it was planned weeks in advance. That's the important thing. If it was planned weeks in advance, the 9-11, the Twin Towers is planned weeks in advance. Okay, it can't be any other way. And that's why the, the official government report of 9-11 never mentions Building 7. Because they have, no, they have no explanation. They have no cover story. So the other cover story is, oh, the planes did it, so it went down. Which, by the way, can't be either. But rather than getting into all technical details, Building 7 is the obvious answer. So when you ask me about 9-11 uh, Truth Movement, yes, I believe that. And I believe it shows how evil and corrupt our government is. And, and how much we have to resist and fight the Federal Reserve and the government. Now, I'm going to tell you one more thing, which I don't say, which I don't tell very often, but I'm going to say it tonight. I mentioned one of the Rockefellers in, uh, in, in, across the street in the theater about women's lip. I'm going to tell you another little story. Eleven months before 9-11 ever happened, he called me up and spoke to me, well, I should say he was at my house, and he was and he, talking, and he said, Aaron, you know, this is going to be an event. I don't, and he, he didn't tell me what the event was going to be. And I don't know that he knew what the event was going to be. But there's going to be an event. And we're going to invade Afghanistan so we can build a pipeline out of the Caspian Sea. We're going to invade Iraq so we can control the oil there and, and, and uh, control the Middle East and get them to be part of the New World Order because they're, they're resisting us. And we're going to invade Venezuela. We're going to go after Venezuela, which they tried to do, but Chavez beat them off. They keep trying. <laughs> so all these things, in my opinion, bring me to the conclusion that the battle we're facing is that of good and evil. That's our battle. It's not whites and blacks. Blacks love me. I love blacks. It's not Jews and Muslims. I love Muslims. They, I'm a Jew. You know, it doesn't matter what you are. We're individuals. All Jews aren't the same. And I hear this stuff about Jewish bankers, you know, and this thing and that thing. You know, you, you got to stop thinking in groups. We're all individuals. We're all human, period. Except, well, we're all human, human individuals. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And so stop thinking of people in terms of being, oh, all blacks are the same, or all Jews are the same. Or, you got to get over that way of thinking. Because it's wrong. What matters is what Martin Luther King said. It's the character of who you are that matters. Not your religion or your color or your, any of that. What matters is, do you have integrity inside? Do you have honor? Nice. You know? Do you like yourself? Of course, you respect yourself. I know a lot of wealthy people. I mean, really wealthy people. You know, from Hollywood politics. I mean, I know a lot of people. They're not happy, most of them. Because they don't like who they are. I'd rather have no money and like myself than have a billion dollars and not like who I am. Okay? You have to, and to like yourself means you have to respect yourself. And to respect yourself means you have to behave in a fashion that you would respect if you saw somebody else doing that. It's standing up and being true to your nature. Being true to who you are. You see, I, there's an old saying that a leopard never changes its spots. I don't believe that. <coughs> I don't believe that. I believe we all have character that can be molded like a piece of clay. Nice. And if we choose to mold our character to be a certain way, we can do that. And how I know that? Because I've done it. Yeah. I wasn't always this kind of person. And when I was a kid, I was pretty rotten. Yeah. <laughs> I, was. I, mean, I did a lot of bad shit. You know? and, you know, and I did. And I, I can look back now and say to myself, you know, I'm not embarrassed by it. Because all that stuff I did, led me to where I am today. It's part of the path we go on. You see? So, it's critical that you don't, you don't uh, berate yourself for things you've done in the past. It's all part of growing up. But it's also important that you shape your character to be something you could admire, or you would admire in somebody else. And then you like yourself. Because you can look in the mirror and say, you know, I'm pretty good, I'm okay. I treated that person nicely today. I stood up for the right things. 
So that's just my own personal philosophy. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yes, sir. Uh, when King got killed, a lot of those fires that were dead on the west side was uh, dead by the police. I happened to be in a store when they threw a firebomb at me. Really? I seen them coming up the alley, and I bagged up, and I hid behind a big column just like that, and that firebomb come through there, exploded, fire went everywhere. <laughs> so you're saying that they created the riots? No, they created all the fires. Well, I can tell you, that's interesting you said that. Because that day, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, my nightclub was opening in Chicago that very day. And nobody came because of the riots and the fires. Hmm. And eventually, my nightclub burned down too. Wow. And I always, blamed, I always thought it was them that did that. You know, because they, they don't want me having this nightclub. And so, uh, hmm. it's like now they don't want me on the air, talking on television. Yeah. So I believe in uh, the, the Waco incident when the man said that uh, they threw a bomb. Oh, I was in this store by myself. Well, I believe I totally believe you. And what happened in Waco? I mean, I know for fa I, know, I know what happened there. I'm 58 years old. You're 58. I was in the store called Highway Style Shop. When I went to the alley, I seen the police coming up with the rag gear and all like that. Right. So I went back and hid behind the collar. And that bomb came through there, was turning around, and when it exploded, fire went everywhere. It's just amazing, isn't it? It's just amazing. I mean, when my club, I'm gonna tell you what happened in my club in Chicago. What's the name of it? Well, it's called the Electric, Electric Theater and then Kinetic Playground. I'm the, I'm the one who brought Led Zeppelin there to America. Wow. You know, and I used to put on big shows with Grateful Dead and Jefferson Airplane, Sam and Dave, you know, B.B. King, Albert King, uh, all kinds of great bands used to play my nightclub. Muddy Waters every Sunday. What? Clark Muddy Street Waters every Sunday. Muddy night. Waters was there. Always, yeah. What? Oh, was it on Clark Street near Lawrence? 4800 Clark, yeah. There you go. All, the, all rainbow skating rink. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was my nightclub. Totally now. Now, get this now, now, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> One night, I was having a, remember it was the year of the Democratic Convention in 68 in Chicago. And all the hippies were coming out from all around the country to go to the, to the convention. And they decided that they want to use my nightclub to hold a fundraiser. And I said, sure, no problem. So the club was filled with a few thousand. We held like 5,000 people in the club. It was pretty big. And uh, there were a few thousand people there. And I'm, look, and I'm up on the second floor in my office. And I look out the window overlooking the cemetery there. And uh, I see paddy wagon after paddy wagon after wow. paddy wagon pulling up in front of my nightclub. Blue lights on, you know, the whole thing. There had to be 15 or 20 wagons at least anyway. What is going on? I'm thinking about it. It's right in front of my club. I want to see them coming into my club. So I ran downstairs. Is there anything wrong going on? And there wasn't. So I realized they were going to raid the club. So I called everybody. I went, I went up to the stage. And I told everybody, listen, we're being raided. Sit down on the floor. Pull out, you know, and cooperate with the police. As I said that, one of the policemen threw me off the stage, into the up from behind my back. I didn't even know it, and into the arms of another cop on the bottom, and they started dragging me out. As they're dragging me out, I'm going, you know, victory, victory, you know, I'm doing the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I see the fire department there, and the fire department is emptying the trash the trash cans on the floor. I say, what in the world are they doing that for? What's going on here? Why emptying the flat trash cans on the floor? They take me out to the paddy wagon, and they put me in the paddy wagon. As I step into the paddy wagon, one of the cops grabs my groin from, from behind me and squeezes. As a man, you probably know how that feels. And I fell to the floor in dire pain. And uh, the next kid that came into the paddy wagon, as he was stepping in, one of the cops of the billy club smashed him in the back of the head and split his skull open. Mm -hmm. For no reason. There was no reason for any of this. <coughs> the next day in the newspaper, it says, Electric Theater, Short Circuited. You know? And there's my picture in the newspaper with my, my Great Dane. And, and uh, now I'm out of jail. They arrested me. I'm out of jail. And then I'll never forget this. I don't know if I should mention names or not. Go ahead. <laughs> but a sergeant and a captain from the police department came to see me. Because so I went on television to explain that not, you know, that what the cops did, that they were wrong, that nothing happened there. Oh, I left that important. So the fire department dumped in the trash. What that was about was the cops said that the place, the fire department went there and the place was littered full of garbage 
Hmm. And it was a fire hazard. And when they tried to get people to stop that, the people attacked them. Hmm. They attacked the fire department. So the fire department had to call the police for help. Oh, wow. That was the cover story. Hmm. So um, the, next, the next day or two days later, I'm going on television. I'm going trying to tell the story. Nobody paid attention. Nobody cared. And I thought this was just in Chicago. But two days later, the cops came to me, and a sergeant and a captain. I said, Mr. Russo, we didn't know that was you the other night, because you're so young. I was only 24 at the time. And they said, we, I didn't know that was you, and um, we're sorry if you got hurt, you know. But uh, we're here to help you. I said, you are? How are you going to help me? He <laughs> said, listen, I know you want to stay open, and we have no reason to shut you down. So let me tell you what the, what the deal is. There are four plans. There's the A plan, the B plan, the C plan, and the Super Deluxe. And the Super Deluxe plan was $2,000 a month. Mm. And you give them $2,000 a month, and whenever they're going to raid you, they call you up and tell you they're going to raid you. And when they raid people there, they don't really bother them too much. They just do it for appearances. So I took the Super Deluxe. Wow. And uh, everything was fine, and my club was a giant success. And then one day, they said to me, look, the local alderman wants to shut your club down. And Mayor Daly, the senior Mayor Daly, uh, wants to, wants, is going to cooperate with them, and we want, we're going to shut your club down. So, of course, we're so honored, but we're not going to take money from you anymore. Hmm. That got me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I started fighting them in court. <coughs> And uh, then one night, there was a big fire. Uh. And the club burned down. And that was the end of it. And so I'm giving you my back. That happened the same time around Martin Luther King's assassination in Chicago. So that made me think of a story to tell you. So I'm just sharing my stuff with you guys. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. Yes, sir. I wonder if... Um, I'm just wondering because I'm thinking about your film and the uh, who killed the electric car and um, the inconvenient truth. I wondered if the, and then I know that Michael Moore has a film coming out about the healthcare system later on in the year. Did, is there, a, is, did that have, did you all talk or does it, or, or, or did it, is it just, uh, you know, yeah, that, that all of this is coming out now? It's just, it's just the time. I've never spoken to any of those three people. Uh -huh. Those three movies, never in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had this movie to make because I felt this is the truth about America, and I wanted to let American people know how it really works. Because they're f they're deluded into thinking it's Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. and they all hate each other. If you're a Republican, they hate you. If you're a Democrat, they hate you. And it's just it's so stupid. It's, it's just the, the other two, but the ones that are out now, they all sort of really tie in, in a sense, to what you're. Well, in the sense that they're thinking. social issues. Yeah. But this is different. My issue, my movie deals with the root cause of the problem. Right. You know, theirs deal with the symptoms of the problem. Right. That's the difference in the films. And um, if it wasn't for Michael Moore, my film would never have been made. Mm -hmm. He was a trailblazer. Yeah. And I thought he made a good movie. You know, even though I didn't agree with it all. You know, I thought he made a good movie. As a filmmaker, I respected what he did. But the reason that film got so much attention from the press and the media, and because that film played in to the polarization of America. Mm -hmm. You see, the bankers want that. They like when the Democrats and Republicans are fighting, because mm -hmm. nobody's paying attention to that. They like keeping things focused that way. And so while Michael made a really good film as a filmmaker, I think what he did uh, wasn't really catching the right issues. You understand? And so uh, that's why my film, they're not going to let it on the air. Nobody will interview me. No television station will interview me. Mr. President. They won't let it out. Um, I, I was out of your line of sight. What could I do? Um, a little, can you take just a piece of constructive criticism about dealing with the film? You go straight from, you know, you, you, I agree. I've studied this for years and years. And I can't reason, change this film, the, so I don't want to hear it. No, but in, talk, <laughs> in talking about it, in talking about it. The, it goes straight from the problem of the Federal, of the federal Reserve, and it has to address what moderate people will perceive it. And it's dealing 
the money to do good. Liberals look at anything about the federal income tax, and they say, oh, you can't touch that because that's how we do good. That's how we help racism. And, it, and somehow in an audience, I mean, people in the movement, we have to tell people that that takes the power, all our power to tax and create good things, they oh, steal shit. it. They steal our ability to, to by, by the, by the, by, because the money all goes to the Federal Reserve. Nothing good gets happened. Well, it doesn't and, go for infrastructure, just, it goes for interest. Which doesn't, which shouldn't be there in the first place. Well, it would be our so, so what's the constructive criticism? Just to let people know that the, li but what, what liberals fear, and you read the reviews of it, they fear that if you interfere with the in income tax in any way, then nothing good what, can what get any good. What should I do with the film that could change that? No, you can't. I don't mean that, but I'm just saying, saying we, could, we could, in reaching <laughs> people. <laughs> Next question. Oh, I'm missing it. I'm missing I, the point. I, okay. What is we, you, what, what's your constructive criticism? That, that if the, the, a democracy, uh, 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 not a democracy, a uh, constructive we have the ability to do good without giving all our power over to the Federal Reserve. Other people will think, oh, we, they, don't, they don't disconnect tax and Federal Reserve. And just like when the Federal Reserve has all the money, the businessmen think, oh, well, that's the business system. You're messing with the business system. But if the Federal Reserve has these trillions of dollars that they can plug into a state, they had just tires opened up in Illinois a few months ago. Who put a trillion dollars to open a store in every town and every state? There is no free you, enterprise. You're, lose, you're losing me. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying it interferes with free enterprise and it interferes well, what's the with. Point? And, what, what is it you want me to do in the film? I'm missing the point. I'm just saying just to, to keep the focus on all the things that the Federal Reserve interrupts. Is, uh, it goes to, it goes directly to fascism. It stops all our normal you know, processes. What's going to happen to you personally? To me personally? No. I don't think about that. I mean, if I did, I couldn't function. Right. Yeah. You understand? I nice. just go forward. I don't go over my shoulder. Anybody trying to kill me or do whatever? I mean, no, Fred I mean, Smart. Fred Smart got some calls from somebody in North Carolina. Three calls or something, right, Fred? Yeah. yeah. Telling me that I'm a target and I'm this and I'm. You know, you, know, you don't pay attention to that. Crap. Connected to some mafia, hooky underworld in the East Coast, and look, uh, three calls after six weeks uh, said. He was a target, and please watch out for yourself and watch out for Aaron. He needs wow. protection. They wanted Fred to drop out. They didn't want Fred helping. They, they're trying to shut this movie down. They don't want the movie being seen on television. They don't want people talking about it. They want to scare my volunteers away. They'll do anything they can do. Because this is the movie that exposes the truth. That's the only one that's ever been made like this. Right? Yes. You understand? So that's what it's about. They want to scare me. And they're not going to scare me. They may kill me. Look, uh -huh. the truth is this. That... All four presidents that were assassinated, McKinley, Garfield, Lincoln, and Kennedy, all four of them were against the Federal Reserve. Now, that could be coincidence, but I doubt it. <laughs> and they were the only four. Yes, in blue. Um, I see what you're talking about, you know, in the future, because I don't see this happening tomorrow, so as a student... You don't see what happening tomorrow? I mean, you know, them closing down the Federal Reserve. So I'm wondering, like, well, wait, this is my first question. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm wondering, like, as a student, because um, I didn't, you know, file my taxes this year, I would say, you know, I didn't make too much and blah, blah, this. Right. But, you know, I can't go to school this year because I don't have the financial aid because I didn't file my taxes. So I'm like, I, I was going to ask you, like, in a sense, you know, if we were looking for money from the government, what would we do? That was my first question. And then when they, and then we Don't you know, look for money from the government. That's the first thing. But I'm saying, though, I mean, because personally, me, I don't have it. And I'd like to pull it out somewhere because I know we're going to need it within don't the make next, it. you know, year or so to at least get us to where we need to go. I, I mean, I, I do, I know what you're talking about, but you have to understand where I'm coming from, that within the next year or so, before we can, you know, literally shut everything in down, we're still going to be, you know, getting money to buy our gas, using money to pay our light bill, to go to school, you know, these things. I, 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 your, your thoughts aren't clear to me. Okay, I'm not okay, getting, let me understand. I'm not getting the concept behind what you're asking. I'm asking about, when you're talking about taxes, Yes. Okay, so, and then you're tying that into shutting down, because I see where the movie's leading up to, shutting down Federal Reserve. I saw yes. what you, you know, tied that into. Right. So as a part of taxes, you know, everybody fills out your taxes, you do this, you do that. But for students, we do it, our motivation for doing it is for that the government to say, oh, thank you for filing your, filing your taxes, here's some money, please go to school, blah, blah, this. So as a student who's not filing the... It doesn't, let me, let me help you out. Okay, please. It doesn't matter... If the Federal Reserve is in existence, or the government's making the money. If the government wants to help you, they can. It's, just, it's the same money. Okay. So it doesn't, you know, the difference is this. If the Federal Reserve makes the money, then we have to pay them interest. 
and we're in great debt. If the government makes the money, there's no interest to pay. And you're not in debt anymore. Mr. Russo, I believe what she's trying to say, though, is that the structure is set up to, to uh, facilitate that, meaning that as a student, if you want, to, if you want, a st if you want the government to help you, a Pell Grant, for instance, right. you have to show an income tax return. Oh, so there's no okay. way to get around that. I, I understand that. that. There's no question. And same thing with having an employer. If you don't want to pay your income taxes, they take it out of the source. Your employer doesn't allow you not to pay it. You understand? So the system is designed to help them. There's no question. You know, you want to get a loan to go to college. You know, they want to put you in debt and they want you to file your taxes so you're part of the system. Right. That's the way, that's how smart they are. Mm -hmm. right. That's what they do. I understand that part. I'm just, you know, what do we do? <laughs> well, you got, yeah, it's called sacrifice. That's it. It's called sacrifice. I mean, the truth is that look what the founding fathers did to get away from England controlling them. Look what we have to do to get away from the Federal Reserve controlling us. I mean, it's just, it's just sacrifice. There's no denying it. That's not easy. But there's no question that the, the Federal Reserve can be shut down in a matter of weeks. No, oh, I, I, I believe it. I've been, I'm just glad you came out with this. I've been, you know, what if we got this money? <laughs> Wouldn't I mean, we all they, be great? Congress has the ability, the legal authority, to shut them down. But then my next question ties into that. Actually, I have two more questions. When you talk about the chips, what about vaccinations? Because I've always, when they first came out with that little implantation for, right. you know, track your kids, right. I was like, what the hell? So they could just track you and then, oh, look, you were there for that murder that night. We tracked you right here. Right. You know, I was like, hell no. So then, I mean, what about vaccinations and, you know, implanting people without them knowing? Aren't you afraid of that? And then my third question, before you go off, is, you know, once we do get off and once we do shut the Federal Reserve down, you know, what will happen to the value system? Because I've heard rumors about, you know, about the social, uh, excuse me, about the social security number being backed by human, I mean, the money system being backed by, you know, human bodies, human bodies, mm -hmm. and not actual gold, and that the gold was actually stolen, that there is no more, and that's why they were creating money out of thin air. There is no more. Right, right. so it, once we, knocks. right, but once we shut down, you know, saying the, uh, the Federal Reserve, yeah. you know, place, what will happen to the value system? How we, you what know. What do you mean the value system? Do you mean like the money system? There's no more money. So well, I well, say. No, 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 Somehow I'm not coming across to you. Okay. Yeah. The government, whatever the Federal Reserve does, the government can do. Right. Okay. Without interest. I see. So if you get rid of the Federal Reserve, it doesn't mean there's no money anymore. Okay. It just means you're not paying interest on the money anymore. Yeah. They're creating it. We own the money. How many times have you heard, it doesn't matter what the debt is because we owe it to ourselves? People say that all the time. But we don't owe it to ourselves. We owe it to them. You understand? So by getting rid of the Federal Reserve, we're now eliminating all the debt. And we get take our gold back. Because all those guys should be hung by their feet. <laughs> okay? So what has to happen is we get rid of the Federal Reserve system. It's what, it's what Abraham Lincoln said in the quote in the movie. It's, it's, it's the government's greatest creative opportunity. We no longer have to be slaves to money, but we can embrace it and, and do good for mankind. The problem will be is if the government prints so much money that that is a massive inflation and they destroy the value of the currency. But as long as you have a gold standard behind it, that won't happen. Like between 1800 and 1910, no, no, the price of a loaf of bread didn't go up for 100 years because it was all steady. You had a gold back system. Whatever money was printed was backed by something real. And there was no inflation. Today, people don't know what, the, what their future is going to be. People are nervous. They're anxiety ridden. That's why you drive in your car, hey you, you know, and they yell at each other. <laughs> so everybody's, up, everybody's like uptight. Everybody's nervous. People can't relax anymore because they're worried. They can't pay their bills, you know. That's because of the Federal Reserve System. And so, if, and they're going to take it further into slavery, complete slavery. All right, that, this, is the, that, that person keeps raising his hand. Yeah, this is, I've been waiting patiently. I have to Not patiently, you've been doing this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Russo! In, impatient. I'm over here! <laughs> I want to know if you can expound on the concentration camps, if you've heard of that, the three, the 600 concentration camps around the country, Project Rex 84. <laughs> What's happened is the government is paying Halliburton, I think $585 million, to build detention centers. Here. around America yep. to put people and um, they say it's for immigration problems what infowars.com oh yeah prison planet
Yeah, I mean, you can go, you can go on the web, on Google, and go to Alex Jones' site, and, and you find that, just print, put in, uh, put in Halliburton detention centers, and it'll come up on Google. Yes, sir. It seems like the least respect of her, one of the least respect of her, Talk louder, please. ...is elected officials. And I think we have to get to the meat of the matter. The ones who took it away from us, to those elected officials, we have to get back to these elected officials and demand what they stand for instead of wishy-washy. I mean, we got the biggest wishy-washy in the United States. Federal officials aren't wishy-washy. They don't care about us. They're working for the bankers. We have to... We're wishy-washy, not them. What? We have to make sure that these elected officials know our concerns. Because they just keep on doing it and doing it. Yeah, because they're controlled. That's the point. Well, I agree with you. That's what the whole point of freedom to fascism is. That's why I asked you to join, so we can set up millions of people together to take on this battle. So what we need is to build the numbers. And that's why I ask you to tell everybody about this. Spread the word so people know. Go on the website and sign up. You know, sign up to, to, to sign the petition to shut it down. And also sign up two things. Sign up so that we have your name and your email address you know, that you want to be part of this. And those two things, and then when we have the right amount of numbers, you'll hear from me. Believe me. I have big plans. Nice. You know, I don't want to give them all away. Who's a cop in here? Anybody a federal cop in here? I'm a soldier. Somewhere. I'm a soldier. Are you a federal I'm a, uh, army reservist. Army reservist. And I'm paid to at least commission. I was actually talking to the white guy with the bald head. <laughs> I was raising his hand. Are you working for the federal government? No, okay. uh, but I, I do want to add something. Um, yeah. Please talk louder. About the wishy-washy thing? Yes. Um, well, part of it is because a, a majority of Americans have been immunized from thinking for themselves. And when yeah, someone right. in, this country, in this country starts Me. thinking independently, you're immediately labeled as a communist, a Nazi, extremist, a, a, extremist, a fanatic, <laughs> Uh, uh, whatever, and liberals are going to hate you, conservatives are going to hate you, but I don't care. We shouldn't care. We should be standing up for what we believe, and I thank you for putting that in the bill. Thank you. I don't care what they call me. You know, it's like what Sherry Jackson said in the film. She said, I don't, you know, they call us extremists, they call us tax protesters. I don't care what they call me. Just show me the law. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they call you. That's just part of their propaganda. You see, they have to demean people, to label people. Look, a lot of the reviews, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of the reviews that came out, uh, like you just saw the movie. The movie was about, the tax section of the movie, was about the fact that the Supreme Court said they can't do this. That's the basis of my argument, right? Every one of those reviews that said they didn't like the movie, they all said the same thing, that my argument was that the 16th Amendment wasn't ratified, which was mentioned one time, very briefly in the movie. So the fact that 10 or more reviewers all said the same thing, mm -hmm. which wasn't true, means someone's telling them what to write. Yep, definitely. Do you understand? They don't want this movie out. They want to shut this down as best they can. And it's up to us to make sure it goes alive and thrives. Yes. We have to thrive. Yes. Mr. Russo, in, in keeping with that Call thought, me Aaron. Thank you. First off, the camera loves you. It does? <laughs> <laughs> Just as, as a, a simple plan, how, how do we take back our government? How do we make this go back and work for us? I Just told you how. simply, we stop paying taxes? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Shut down the Federal Reserve System. And stop the people who control our government. And Look, this government's going to be, I don't know, I don't want to have to say it over and over again. Maybe I'm not being clear. This government is going to be run by the people of this country or by the banks. If you want to be run by the people, you have to shut down the Federal Reserve System so that we run our own country again. That's the country of we the people, for the people, by the people, which is not the case anymore. So you want a solution? I don't care about taxes. You want to pay a tax? Pay a tax. I don't care. There's no skin off my back. I'm telling you there's no law that requires you to do it. Whatever you want to do is up to you. But I am telling you this. Shut down the Federal Reserve System.
And we do that simply by going to the website. Using credit card. By, you do it by millions of people organizing together and standing up and letting the politicians in, in Washington know that they will get no votes unless they sign an affidavit agreeing to vote to shut down the Federal Reserve System by being heard, by having millions of people being heard, by marching on Washington, all colors, all races, all everybody. We don't want this in this country, and you have to be heard. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take massive civil, like the, like the Martin Luther King, led, led the stuff down south. That's what it takes. It takes people speaking up. We're not going to be slaves anymore, and we want to shut down the Federal Reserve System. And one thing it's going to do for sure is waking up the rest of the people in America to what the truth is. You understand? Yeah. That's what it's going to take. Can we do a <laughs> Can we do a Boston Tea Party, you know, like... I'm up for it. Without That's what we did the Boston Tea Party for originally. So we're no problem. without representation still, for now. So, I'm up for doing a lot of things. So we can throw some I don't want to talk about them yet. Let's watch Fight Club. Look, I'm with you. There's lots, there's lots of ideas and lots of plans. But the truth is, we can't execute anything until we have the numbers. Mm -hmm. We need the people first. Once we have the people, watch what happens. There'll be massive, massive demonstrations. Would it be a way for us to know, uh, for you to update us on how these things are going? I told you to sign up on the website. That's how I update everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. Aaron, you got to, in Chicago, you got to be very careful because we don't know if they got spies here or so what, what they're going to do. Man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, people get hurt. You you can't, you, you got, don't, live, don't let the darkness overtake you. And yeah. what Patrick Henry says the truth. Give me liberty or give me death. Yep. And I'll fight you. And we'll all fight together and stand together. Awesome. Just spread the word to everybody. That's what it's going to take. Spread the word to people in other cities. New York, Los Angeles, Detroit. Spread the word. Let people find out about this. Spread the, spread the link to the uh, website around. Call people on the phone. Tell them to see the movie. You know? We need to, I mean, the problem is people don't work hard enough to get this done. And the truth is, I can't do it alone. There's only so much I can do. So I'm here to try and motivate people to do it. With all your research with the experts, how shielded is who owns those shares of the Federal Reserve? No one knows who owns them. And what do the experts speculate on where that those, as a private corporation, those shares may be? Held? Well, we know that was we know it's incorporated in Delaware, and as as Congressman Paul said, it's private. Nobody knows who owns the stuff. And they keep Belgium. Could they subpoena the the Fed? They would. How? Yeah. How? Belgium. That's where the computers at. You know, I, I mean, I'd love to. Everybody would love to know. I mean, they say, well, the member banks own it, you know, but that's just a cover answer. Yes. Hi. Um, Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, What's your name? You're cute. My, my name is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. I am too. You know, I've got your face. <laughs> you know, I've taken this medicine, and it's making my face kind of blotchy and pimply for the medicine, so I, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed by it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry about that. Like my movie. My movie. Okay. I appreciate that you took the time to make this movie and that you basically put it out for yourself. Will you give me a massage tonight? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to get at here, though, is... Uh, Speak up, we can't hear you. Okay, my concern is with the RFID chips and the, uh, the national ID card. Why don't you stand up? Sure. <laughs> I want to know um, what can be done in refusing the national ID card. Where can we go? I know I'm going to get in trouble when I say I don't want this. I want to know if no, there are there's already people in place that think. will be able to help the public. Well, let me put you this way. It's going to come in your driver's license. <coughs> I know. So it means you can't drive with a driver's license. And that's two years from now. You don't need one. Okay. And I expect to have millions of people driving without driver's licenses. Okay, so that's what I keep saying. Let's organize. Let's make this happen together. So I, they do it in your driver's license because they know you're going to do it that way. Oh, I need a driver's license. I can't drive it out. Bullshit. You know how to drive? <laughs> Does a license make you drive better? No. By the way, a license is bullshit. Okay, let me tell you something. Nice. 
It's a privilege granted by government. The truth is, you have a right to walk, you have a right to ride a bicycle, you have a right to ride a horse, you have a right to drive a car. The difference is, when you drive a car, it could be damaged for other people. So, what you need is a certificate of accomplishment that, that you, have, you know how to drive, but you don't need a license. So license means they're giving you a privilege. Right. Screw that. You get a COA, Certificate of Accomplishment. I can now exercise my rights. I'm a good enough driver, I can exercise my right to drive. You're not giving me any license, because I have a right. And stop, you need a license. What do you need a license? I want to put a hardware store for it. What about a beauty pot? You need a license for that? No. Nope. You need a license to give a massage? No. What's all this license crap? It's how they control you. Right. Aaron. Exactly. Also, the Catherine Albrecht, who was in the film, she's going to be a transitions bookstore. Excuse me, this is a promo for Catherine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more, she's going to be a transition. Uh. Yeah, she'll be a transition. Okay. She's what really she's, seven, seven she's, she's brilliant about the, about the chips. What day? Tuesday? Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Tuesday night at 7 transitions. Also, I have a North Avenue and what, Southport? Chip, chip, chip. I've got to take some other questions. Didn't you want to ask a question? Somebody over here? You did. Okay. I was at transitions uh, when you uh, first um, came. Um, right. I am from St. Louis. And uh, I spoke with you about bringing the film to St. Louis. I almost wore my fingertips off trying to reach you to see what we could do to bring the film to St. Louis. I had a phone number from some guy, and it's like, uh, are there really team players here? Or are we going to get this moving forward? Well, you have to understand. It takes money. It takes money. I Every city you saying. go to takes money to open the movie. Right. Okay. So we already so, had the theater. Um, but you know, did you, do you have money for television advertising? Do you have money for newspaper advertising? No, but you we have money have for a, radio? You have, have money for prints? We have a network already. Um, you know, let there me, was let, no let, one let that called back or said anything. I don't, know anything I, I don't know anything about that. Okay, yeah. honestly. Well, what do we do to move forward? No. Okay. Well, hopefully this will be a series, <laughs> a series of revelations that got you. I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, I, did, I mean, you talked to the Rockefeller, right? Yeah. When you were running for governor of Nevada. Right. And you must have had other, other conversations. Well, who told you that, say, the income tax was illegal? I've heard it, I've heard it for years. So I decided to investigate myself. I thought they'd make a good documentary to find out whether it's true or not. And that was one of the reasons why I made this movie. So I wanted to find out the truth. And then when I called the IRS on the phone, and I said, guys, I'm going to make a documentary about you guys. And I'd like to know what the law is, and I'd like to interview the commissioner. And they said, well, no, we interview, you know, you can't interview the commissioner. And, we, we can, you know, go to the website and you'll see where the law is. And the website was just propaganda, nonsense. I said, hey, there's something wrong here. They refused to answer the people's questions about where the law is. In other words, if there was a statute written by Congress, they would say, look, go to the books, here's the statute number, and go look it up. Go read it. But they don't do that. So you know there's something wrong. They, could, they could go all around the bush, you know, go here, go here. They never give you a straight answer. It's all propaganda. So that's what made me make the movie. And then once I started making the movie, I said, you know, this movie, for me, the IRS and the taxes represent the police state, and I think the movie should continue beyond the IRS. Originally, the movie was called April 15th, the real April Fool's Day. That was the original title of the movie. And it was 100% about the IRS. And I decided to change it, because I felt there were issues that were much more important than the IRS. And that's why I got into the Federal Reserve and the New World Order and the police state. So that, that sort of evolved out of all that. <coughs> Anybody else? I, who happened I called them? Me. <laughs> I, I, I have a couple of questions. One of the questions is... Uh, yeah, do, one second. Do me a favor. When somebody's asking a question, don't keep your hands raised, because I find it distracting. Okay, just let, let the person finish speaking, and then raise your hand. Okay, I'd like to know, uh, why do you support Bill Dark Walls here in Chicago? And uh, can, um, and what is, what is your take on rap music as it affects, the, as a new culture affecting America? Well, it's like this. First, I, I support Bill Dark Walls because he saw the movie, and he said he believes in everything in the movie and that he would make, make that part of his campaign. 
and anybody who recognizes what's happening and talks the truth, I'll support. And, 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 so, and so damn bitch. <laughs> Because they know. Because I, I love most music, you know. Uh, I don't like country and western very much, <laughs> and I don't like rap very much. Because it's a little too um, aggressive for my taste in music. Okay, but that doesn't mean I don't I don't respect the people who do. Because it's very difficult to do good rap. You know, it's just not my taste necessarily. And so, uh, and I can't say for sure what it's doing to society. I think I think that's your question. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, you know, what it's doing to society. I know that uh, everybody <clears throat> dresses the same. You know, the hat's on the side, the pants are <laughs> to the knee. You know, it's like everybody has the same costume, you know. <laughs> and I, I certainly recognize that, you know. Um, but on the other hand, anybody here have the hat on that one? But I really don't have a good opinion about what it's doing to the country socially. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, and everybody was talking about the Grateful Dead and drugs and smoking pot. I smoked a lot of pot, and I did. I was definitely smoking lots of weed, you know, when I was younger. And I did my fair amount of drugs when I was younger. And everybody said, you know, it's, it's going to kill you and this and that, and the parents were crazy and up in arms about it. But Frank Zappa said a very smart thing about music. He said, if music really had that much of an effect on people, and everybody would be in love. So that's all you hear is love songs, right? I mean, all songs don't how much I love you and you love me and that, and that girl, I love that girl, you know? Hmm. But you know, I think music is limited to the effect it has on you. And I know for me, that drugs were a very important part of my life when I was a kid, you know? And now I hate drugs because my son's a drug addict, <laughs> okay? And I hate what it's done to him. And I have, I've had no success in getting him to stop. You know? And uh, it's very painful for me. Okay? It's very painful for me to have my son be a drug addict. And he can't stop himself. It reminds me of Richard Pryor, who I loved. I love Richard Pryor dearly. And I just saw that man, who was probably the most talented man I've ever met, the funniest guy I've ever met. You know? And I've met them all. See how he destroyed his life. You know? Through the use of crack, and crack cocaine, and... You know, I, when I made Trading Places, the original cast was to be Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. Wow. That was the original cast. It wasn't Eddie Murphy and Danny Aykroyd. And Richard couldn't be found. I mean, Gene Wilder agreed to do it. And then Richard Pryor, couldn't, he, was, he was somewhere in Hawaii, stoned out, and he could be spoken to. You know? And I love Richard. You know? I mean, I did a show with Richard at the Hollywood Bowl. And uh, I'll never forget. Oh, I'm not going to get into that tonight. But any other questions? I'm sorry. Yes? You know, we're not, we're not on the island here, let's say, you know, the rest of the world is starting to vote against our currency. Yes. Objectively. Yeah. Okay. You can see it's wrong. Yes. Okay. Secrets out all over the world. But I think the central banks are in collusion to prop it up. In other words, the foreign central they're banks keep buying the dollar. <laughs> Can you talk louder? Yeah, they're trying, but it's dropping regardless. Yeah, but it hasn't made new lows yet lately. You know, it's around 86. Right? And so, uh, if it breaks down to 80, I would say it's really starting to crack. One last thing, you know, your Federal Reserve issue, you did not mention about JFK issuing the United States notes. Those have disappeared. Treasury, I mean the silver certificates. Not silver. I mean, they had a red seal on the United States note. Yeah, but they were backed by silver. Not the silver certificates. Not the original silver certificates. Not at all. Nothing to do with silver. You said United States note, but now it says Federal Reserve. Yeah. And we have a green seal that had a red seal. May I say something? Yeah. He issued executive order 11110. And that executive order said he was going to print up, I forget how many hundreds of millions of dollars in U.S. Treasury notes, and he wanted it back by silver. So that what you're talking about is why I believe the Federal Reserve killed him. That's my own opinion. It's only an opinion, it's not a fact. Okay? But I believe that because he took on, he was starting to take on the Federal Reserve. When you see people in the Warren Commission, like Alan Spector, 
saying that the bullet turned around in midair. <laughs> okay? And uh, you know that it wasn't Fidel Castro, it wasn't the mafia who could make the senators put out a Warren Commission report that was full of lies, like a bullet turning around in midair. It's the only explanation they have. You know that only the Federal Reserve has that kind of power. So that's the only reason why I believe it. the Federal Reserve killed John Kennedy. But it's only speculation. I believe Everything that. else is fact. But Spectre got cancer for lying, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's not true. What's part? You got cancer? Yeah. Uh, I got cancer and I was telling the truth. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Were you? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> this little boy saw the film. <laughs> Yeah, he did. You didn't want my kids to see the film, but he saw the film. You saw the film? What's your name, son? Marcus. Marcus? Yes. What'd you think of the film? It was pretty good. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put your mother inside of it. Well, it was pretty good, Mama. <laughs> this is smart. You gotta start early. Enjoy. Teach them. Oh, I could. Let me ask a question. Who haven't I addressed yet that wants to be heard? I have I addressed you already. Don't raise your hand. I know I spoke to you already. Click no, didn't. You didn't ask me a question before. No. Wait a second. Wait a second. I introduced you across the street. I haven't said a word since I've been here. Oh, you're Cliff. That's right. I thought you did that. You're you are you are you are you are you have, you have a lot larger audience hey, in, go up there. in Chicago. I don't need to. You have a lot larger audience in Chicago, as you might know. I had a uh, a TV show at one time on cable with some of you may remember Sherman Skolnick. And uh, Sherman and I talked a lot about the volumes of the law that never was. And we got all kinds of uh, good publicity on that. So there's a lot of people here that are aware of it. What I wanted to ask you, when you were in Congress, uh, up until 9-11, for nine months prior to 9-11, there were all kinds of attacks on the IRS. If you remember the Senate hearings with Grassley and they had all, all right, these people right, coming right. in talking about how they'd been ripped off and the, the, how homes were taken. Yes. In fact, on the front uh, cover of, of Newsweek, I still have it, they showed this the American terrorist, and the American terrorist was the IRS agent. Right. That was the cover of Newsweek magazine. They had all these. They were dumping on the commissioner. They were kicking his butt. And then, of course, 911 came, and you didn't hear any more about it. But I'm wondering, you know, if, if, if all of these people, and there were all kinds of testimony from Democrats and Republicans. Of course, Grassley is a Republican, and he was the main guy just kicking their butts. Yet now we've heard nothing about it. They had one other thing uh, just just the last year. You don't think, saw you don't think that 9/11 was done to shove the criticism of the IRS. I'm not sure what the situation is. Uh -huh. It certainly still exists. I mean, what they're doing now is just you as bad as before. It was no distraction. It's a distraction, yeah. Let me say something. It could have been a convenient distraction. They often, they often do uh, attack the IRS for propaganda purposes, you know. Oh. Let people think that they're fighting for them. Right. The IRS, it's, it's, done, it's almost disinformation. You know, they, didn't, they never do anything about the IRS. Well, no, but I've seen it before, but I never saw it to this, this degree. Right. It, it was unbelievable. And then the Wall Street Journal even printed the fact that they called 15 IRS agents with the same question and got 12 different answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to an accountant with the same tax return. Yeah. They'll give you, they'll tell you, each one will tell, tell you a different number, what you owe. Yeah. This is incomprehensible. The, the, I, see, the IRS code doesn't matter. Because the Supreme Court said they can't do that. So whatever the code says doesn't matter, because they can't write law, they can't be in defiance of the Supreme Court. And that's the whole crux of the argument. And no one's ever brought that out before, you know? They always go into the interpretation of the, of the IRS code and this thing. Once you get to the code, forget about it. It stops before the code. They don't have the authority from the Constitution or the Supreme Court to do it. End the, end the story. And there's no statute written. End the story. Call me Aaron. Aaron, thank you. Absolutely. You have a bigger stomach than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a doctor. I know. That's what I was talking about. I've been uh, heavily... Uh, he wants me to be healthy, but look at that stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you don't I'm teasing you. Come on. I am guided to tell you something, and I don't understand what it's going to lead to. But uh, all words have numerological values. Words? All words, all acronyms have numerological values. Right. And you should come up with something that is 
uh, titled SRI, which is the reverse of IRS. Yeah. I don't understand what you will come up with. One well, I do. I got the answer. Yeah. What? My son's name is Sam. Sam Russo Incorporated. Yeah. Nice. Uh -huh. That's all right, baby. No problem. That's, that's one thing. In terms of a strategy letter or uh, something else that you do, it will have an inverse value that will attract to it the things that you need. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do. Only people who have, who, who haven't asked questions who want to first. I didn't ask you yet? Okay, go ahead. Um, I have a question about the Talk louder, please. I have, a, I have a question about the vaccinations. Um, is it possible for the doctors to insert a, um, a tracking device in the small child without a parent knowing? Yes, it's possible. Is I'm not saying they're doing it, but it's is possible. It, is it detectable by an x-ray? I would think so. There we go. I would think it would be yes. Okay. Now I've been told by my child's doctor that I can be reported to DCFS. You've been told what? I've been told by my child's doctor that I can be reported to DCFS for not vaccinating her as a health hazard. Well, it's probably true. It's probably true they can do that to you. In, in today's world, the government thinks they own you. Well, you She's got something. We have never had our kids vaccinated, and we use First Amendment religious rights. That's what it's our religious right not to have our kids vaccinated. You know, I mean, it works. I do it. You write a letter. I have to respond. Oh yeah, I took my kid right out because I got into a big battle. I got into a big battle with the hospital when my son was born. Uh, I'm getting a little bit tired, but when my son was born, uh, I was in the room with him and my wife, my girlfriend really, and uh, when he was born, the nurse said, and he was, I want them to uh, be on my, my wife's breast, you know, and bond right away, and uh, the nurse came and said, all right, listen, we have to put something in his eye, silver oxide or something, mm -hmm. and so we wanted to take your child to put the silver, it's okay, I'll go with you. So I went with her, and we went to the floor upstairs, one floor up. And if they did what they had to do, I said, okay, let's go back downstairs. I want to put the baby with my wife. Oh, no, we can't go back down. Once you're up here, you can't go back downstairs again. I said, what do you mean? I said, I want my baby with my son, with my wife. No, no, you can't do that. I said, okay, then I'm going to bring my wife up here, you know, on the gurney. I said, you can't do that either. I said, what do you want to do? My I want to put your child in the room with all the other kids. With the bright lights on and everything. So um, I said, that's not acceptable to me as a father. Nice. And so um, I went upstairs to see the head of the uh, hospital, some woman, and I tell her my feelings. I said, sorry, I can't help you. Those are the rules of the hospital. I said, I'm this child's father. It's my, it's my rules that count, not yours. Do you understand that? And I'm going to go downstairs and bring my wife up to the next floor and put it with my son. So as I'm leaving, she calls up security. And uh, I go downstairs to, the, to see my wife on the second floor. And I put on one of those green uh, aprons around it, so, you know, over my side of suit and tie on. And I put one of those things on. And I'm whirling her the, to the elevator. And I get to the elevator, and in the elevator are six big bruisers, you know, uh, who are looking for me, then they don't know that's me. <laughs> right? And they go on to the third floor, and they're talking in the elevator, and some crazy guy is going to take his kid out of the, uh, what's that called, that room called? The nursery. Out of the nursery. So as they get out of the elevator, they say, by the way, guys, I'm the crazy guy, you know? And, I, and I, I proceed to take Heidi nice. into a room. I, pro I just put her into a room that was empty. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, now I go out and I go to the nursery to get my kid. And when I get there, these six big guys are there, you know. They look like the guys in the movie at the IRS building who try to stop me. And um, I said, look, you can't go in there. 
I said, I'm going in there. They said, you can't do that. We have to stop you. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go back to the room where Heidi is. And uh, my trial is not in my hands. In five minutes, I'm going in there. In there. A nurse comes into the room a few minutes later. She says, Mr. Russo, you have to understand the rules of the hospital. And I said, no, you have to understand the rules that I'm the child's father. And I'm in charge. You're not. And I want my child with his mother. I don't want him in a room with bright lights on with a bunch of screaming children to be the way he walks into this world. I want him sucking on my wife's breast and being comfortable and warm. And, uh, you know, she said, you can't do that. I said, okay, then I'll go out there and go into the room. She said, wait, 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 don't go out there yet. Don't do anything. She comes back five minutes later. She says, listen, we can't let you do it. I said, okay, I'm going out now. I said, I'm going to tell you one more thing. Those guys might stop me, but I suggest you do something. She says, what's that? I suggest you move all those children away from the class that they look into. Wow. Because they may stop me, but I guarantee you, people may be going through that glass. And I wasn't a little guy, wow. you know, and I was strong. I said, people are going to be flying through that class, so stop moving the children so they don't get hurt, and then we'll see what happens, you know? She says, you would do that? I said, I'm going to get my child. It's your responsibility to move the children. I'm giving you advance warning, okay? I am giving you advance warning. She came back five minutes later with my child. Woo! <laughs> you know? And um, that's what it is in life. You have to stand up for your rights, what you believe in. And then I checked out, as soon as, soon as the baby came to my wife, you know, I was out of there. Just fuck, excuse me, screw the vaccinations. You know, screw it all. You know, you have to stand up for what you believe in. And you have to do what's right. And you can't let these government institutions dictate to you how you live your life. That's the point. It's your life. It's your children. You see the judge the other day told some kid who was a 16-year-old, 17-year-old kid yeah. who was getting sick on chemotherapy and cancer? Oh, yeah. And he didn't want to take it anymore? And the judge says, says to the parents, oh, we're going to put your child into custody of the state. And we're going to give him chemotherapy, even if he doesn't want it, and you don't want him to have it. Yeah. Whose life is it? You have a right to decide for yourself what you want to take. How does the FDA have a right to tell you what medicines you can have? Now, I can understand if they said, well, we recommend this, and we don't recommend that. And then you're free to do what you want. But don't tell me you're going to limit my choices. And that's why I went to Germany to get my own cancer treatment. Because they didn't limit my choices. I was able to do the things I... And I'm, look, I'm going to tell you something. I don't tell a lot of people again. Before I went to Germany, the, the surgeon in the state said I was hopeless. And I was a dead man. And they go get my papers together. Okay? I'm telling you now, I'll be here another 63 years. Go, oh, baby! Go! No. The whole point is, you have to take responsibility for yourself. Don't listen to doctors blindly. Yes, Don't listen right. to teachers blindly. Yes. Think for yourself. Yes, Learn how to think. For Stop being dumbed down. Right. Stop watching that stupid damn television set with all the fake news. You understand? You have to learn how to think. That's what's critical. All right, I'm going to take one more question. Who haven't I asked to... Who? Is there somebody... I, haven't I spoken to you already? No? Have I spoken to you already? What's this? No. I don't have my glasses on. Oh, the store closed in 20, 30 minutes. What? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm going to take one or two more questions. Then I'm going to turn the podium over to Bill and Cliff uh, so they can talk to you as well. And uh, I'm, I am getting tired. I just came through a cancer operation. And... Uh, 38 stitches, folks. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and, um, can I take off my shirt? It's hot. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, you, you, know, I like, you, know, you know I'm very serious, but I like to fool around. You understand that? I have a sense of humor. I like to fool around. Uh, now, do me a favor. Everybody raise their hand who wants to ask a question who has not been addressed tonight. One, two, three.
You want me dressed already? No. Four. Okay. Five. You weren't if you spoke before. I I I said. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I said something about the vaccination. All right. One, two. Oh, wait a second. This is gonna take the next half hour. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's too many. Uh, okay. Pick you one. with the camera. What's it? What is it? Okay, good. Um so, have you done any research on uh, being a sovereign citizen? Have you, are you? Do you know much about that subject? I know that um, in America, all citizens are sovereign. Okay, so that's what I know. I mean, it may not function that way anymore, but that's how it's supposed to function. Next question. So I'm gonna have to move through these quicker. Yes. You talk about now watching TV and all that jazz. There were people ten years ago who knew about this sure. because they were reading. Edward Griffin's book, Creature from Jekyll Island, right. I read, and before I heard anything about this, plus I was getting on my page, said, volume one, will there be a volume two? Oh, yes. Oh, There'll be a volume two, and a volume three, and a volume, until, the last volume is going to be, Freedom to Fascism, Back to Freedom. When we get that, that's when I'll stop. So, as, as an aspiring screenwriter, do you think I should just forget about writing fiction, and only do, or, you, or is there a way to do fiction and still incorporate what you want to say subtly? That, that depends on where your heart is. That's up to you. That's a personal decision. Wait a second. Let me get rid of this. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Who's this? You're on the air. <laughs> IRS? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything I said. I really didn't. I didn't mean anything. I'm so sorry. Better, oh, Mr. Greenspan. Oh, no, I'm not, sir. Whatever you want, I will do for you. I'll lick your feet, I promise you. It's not a problem. You want sex with me? <laughs> Who else? Wait, wait, who raised their hands before you? I did you already, didn't I? No, did? no, no. Good. Uh, basically, my question is, are you optimistic that uh, the American people will, you know, kind of give up the uh, amenities of empire, or are you more doing this as a means to uh, disseminate a certain meme so people will become aware of this? Or you actually think this will lead to the destruction of the Federal Reserve? This I, I, I think it has a possibility. My goal is to the Are you optimistic the about that? I don't know. It depends upon the people. You know, I, I don't know. I can't say. I can only tell you that that's my intention. That's my goal. And I'll work as hard as I can to get it done. It all depends on what everybody else does. Yes? I noticed uh, your transcript is for sale on your website. Yeah. Is there any possibility that might be um, free and not for sale in the, in the interest of disseminating the information? I understand you want to raise funds. Unlikely. For movies and things. Yeah. Okay. People are buying it, so I can't give it away. People are what? Buying it, oh, okay. so I can't give it away. Who else? Is that uh, a more epic? What? that you pull $50,000 to bring it to a theater in another city, or could you give them a little more? It depends on the size of the city, okay? New York was a lot more than that. Okay. Uh, Kansas City was less than that. Chicago was uh, a little bit more than that, not a lot more. Okay. So it depends upon the size of the city and the cost of meteor in that particular city. But the $50,000 I spent here wasn't enough. Yeah. That's all I could afford. So fifty thousand dollars, I take as a uh, an approximate number. You know. So yes, you, you, you got to check for fifty grand. You, you know, I, I have ways that that can be raised. Really? Yes. Selling drugs or? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. I didn't run radio. I ran television, newspaper. I didn't have money for radio. Oh, you, you heard the radio, it was volunteers who put on the radio themselves. I heard about your movie, that's the only way I heard about it. I'm telling you, volunteers bought time on the radio and paid for it, and that's why you heard it on the radio. I didn't buy any radio. Is this a pro you have to put it in, is that a process where you have to put it in the movies first before you can get a DVD yes. that people can buy? Yes. The theaters won't allow you to put it into the DVD form mm -hmm. first, or they won't play it in the theaters. Who else? I just wanted to say one thing. When we were purchasing our tickets, I don't know if anyone else noticed, I ended up with a ticket under a different name. What do you mean a different name? 
Well, I went. To, I wanted a ticket for your movie, and I ended up with a ticket. Uh, something about candy. I can't remember. Uh, there's something another the movie that was showing in the theater that they gave me a ticket for. I remember when Spike Lee movie. When Spike Lee movie came out, the same thing happened with uh, with him, where they were giving people tickets under a different name. Did that happen to anybody else here? No. no. Well, I just just a mistake. Okay. Well, I did turn it back in. I took it back and turned it in, but I was just wondering, you know, if other people had noticed that. Conspiracy thinking. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good for you. Anybody else? Yeah, candy with strangers is what they gave us. Okay. Doc Walls, Clint, oh, who, who are you pointing at, Paul? Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm saying. Uh, who wants to come up first? One over here. He's had Oh. I'm sorry, I have a question. Okay, um, I wanted to know if you'd explored the possibility of being a guest on Chicago Tonight. Have you? What is Chicago Tonight? It's uh, Channel 11, <laughs> yes. local PBS, uh, local uh, news and events. Okay, put me on. Can you put me on there? I have no contact. Well, then what are you asking the question for? Well, I'll, I'll go in anywhere, babe. I suggest you call I'm a whore. I'll go anywhere. Yeah. I suggest you call them. And secondly, I recommend a book called Worse Than Watergate by John Dean. Yes, Watergate, John Dean. It gives chapter and verse about why uh, Bush should be impeached for lying to the American people and getting us into Iraq. All right, listen, Doc Walls is going to take over. I'm going to sit down for a minute.